The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman uh, preparing for my webinar coming up on Wednesday night. Actually, I'd say to subscribers, and I said to, on, on air that if anyone is interested in my webinar coming up, we're already starting to try to position ourselves uh, <clears throat> for, that, for the uh, upcoming webinar. Uh, one of the reasons is we have to take it as opportunity presents. Uh, for instance, we've got a couple of stocks that we've just added to to our list of longs. Actually, we only have longs. We still have a very small position of the Dow short that we we got right seven points from the all-time high, um, and I, I just have to make decisions about that. We had one stock that I said let's treat it as a a proxy for the Dow. It hasn't really moved as well as the Dow, but it is moving up, and that's good. So uh, what I'd also say to subscribers is I know many of you have asked me about uh, dividend stocks. I'll be looking over the weekend, searching through them, and I, I, I've found uh, two. One is in an area that is more sort of industrial, so it gives a nice percentage. This isn't just a purely dividend stock, but it is a stock that gives a pretty good dividend. <laughs> and the other one is um, one that I had on the list from some time ago, and it just got into the range that I was looking for. So we did buy it this morning, and uh, it actually gives, a, over the year, it gives a 10% dividend. I mean, that's pretty darn good. And um, and it's a good stock, but it's it, you never know. This is the start of a position, and we'll see what that. Do. So what I said was, so you, if you are going to sign up, start signing up now because um, by Wednesday we might already have a couple of positions that we want to just stick with, and then we have to, it'll be a little harder because I always have a limited number of stocks. I can't keep following too many stocks because that just I don't have time for that because I do everything else. Um, so. Uh, this is for my webinar coming up this Wednesday night. Let me just show you right here. It is for the opening call subscribers, and you can become a subscriber. Remember, it's, uh, it's basically like a free trial. You sign up for a month. If you're dissatisfied, you get your money back. Uh, subscriber webinar announced what stocks could lead the market high after this correction is completed. I'm not sure the correction itself is completed. I think a chunk of it is completed. Uh, but the rotation says that there are still some stocks in some areas that are kind of weak. Um, so what, what stocks could lead the market higher of this correction is completed August the 21st, 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern time using the Chapman Wave methodology. Basil will show the technical tools that have worked well in identifying market turns. Remember, we, did, we were long a call position at the very turn in December to the upside. Um, we also had the, the short side in April, the day before the high was made in the Dow. Then we got the exact day of the low, June the 3rd. Uh, that was the low that we went long. And, um, and then we got the short seven points from the high, the day of the high. And it was the 16th of uh, July. And uh, we took gains on the way down. Still have a little bit left. And I had said it's going to be kind of tough to call the bottom here because it could be a bouncing ro rotational correction that makes a low, it has kind of an internal low. And then when we look at uh, where the next low of consequence is made, it could be the uh, residual. I think earthquake and aftershock, and sometimes aftershock is less than the earthquake. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it goes on for a period of time. And that's what you have to think of in this kind of. Uh, a low that was made with testing, and, and the Dow is the one index that went to a lower low. You remember it did that in February to, I think it was March or April of last year, made that double bottom low, and, and uh, the others had, and the Dow had. Or oh, was it this year? I'm joking. Time flies, yeah. So uh, what we're looking at is, we're, with this webinar, you actually get my other webinars called The Tide. Remember, that was the technique that I said I'm going to be using to get the sell signals and the buy signals. And that gave a really wonderful series of signals that I used um, 
over a period of weeks, and it was about a week and a half, to say that we've made a top, we are short, but you can't expect the big decline to come yet because of certain conditions that we were looking at, um, and that really did transpire. So the tide was one on June the 12th. We had another one called Anything Goes, the stock market's key phase. What's next for the market? So this is really a very important phase right now because I think, in a sense, if, even if it doesn't quite work out now, this is giving you some kind of an idea of what could work when the really next big takeoff takes takeoff. Uh, I, I call it the takeoff uh, trigger is is kind of motivating the stocks and people to get into the market. So finally, people actually talk about the stock market, which they're not doing right now, and all-time highs are ahead. When is the big question? So, I, and I do believe it'll be this year, but I'm saying when this year. So let's look at the Dow. The Dow right now is up 257. This is really a very good move. Single leg A up. We had that before, then it pulled back one bar, one bar to a leg B. Became B minus at 26,426 in the Dow before coming down to 25,339. So let's go through these things. The S&P. So monthly charts are still quite positive. Not great, but they're quite positive. And I do believe there will be all-time highs. And the question is going to be, how do we add to the long side? We've got the stocks, that uh, some of the stocks that we want. How do we add to the position of, of the long? At 24,820, I think it was, I'd said, this is a time that you can start thinking of going long. Um, for your portfolios, longer, much longer-term portfolios like IRAs, care plans, whatever it is, that's kind of a move that we and then that, that went to the all-time high, um, and at 27,300s. And now what we're looking at is where's the next implementation of, of maybe an add-on to that. So the S&P, nice pattern. I'm looking at the H. Let me make this a little bit bigger. It could still be an H, but if the S&P starts to trade in the 2950s sometime this week. That'll be really positive. That'll say, hey, that's helped the weekly so much because if it doesn't do that, that weekly is destined to do some retesting at least of the 2860, uh, 2840 All right, let's go on. QQQ123, QQQ monthly chart, only a leg B so far. It could be a peak B if there's no new high above 195. Uh, point, is that 35? 195.55. I missed an a, a five right there, 55, and um, in the whole of and whole of August. Next thing we want to look at is um, the IWM. Come off the the base very nicely, but it's had this kind of move before, so it's above the 14-period uh, exponential moving average. The little black line, the bank D hasn't turned positive. Stochastic is good, but it's only at 15%. But it is turning up, so we're going to be watching this very closely because if there's any pullback from 150.60 right now in the next two days below 149.30s, that's not going to be a good sign. I wanted to show you this crude oil. It's stuck in a range, but it's now an upper range. The range now is between 53.60 and I would say 57.60. And you're at 55.49, up just 67 cents. But it's in this higher part of the band, and that's the trading range. And that's good. That weekly chart really needs to see the 50... Oh, I would say the 57s hit fairly soon. Actually, it needs to break above the high of last week, which was 57.42. So I want to see 57.60s. Any intraday move, any intraweek, so in other words, any day that it goes above, there's a good sign. I'd like to see a close above the 5770 area. I like to see crude oil moving higher with the market. That's a good sign. TLT, as we go to the break, the TLT is down at dollar sixty-four, made 148.60 high. Now it's at 143. I mean it hit 143 this morning. 144.49 down to dollar sixty-four. We'll talk about it more when we get back and what are the implications. Basil Chapman Tiger Conditions Hour does. Of 262 SMBs up 35. If you're not currently using the TAS profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS profile scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. I'm just trying to finish this up here. BC and notating this in the Chapman Wave Methodology. T, this is an A, this is a B. There you got your C, you got your, oops, C, I keep hitting that X instead of that. Should be automated, it's not. Uh, let's see, that's going to be taken out. Okay, so this is going to be quite interesting. You know, I've never really looked at it. It was brought to my attention the other day, and I didn't really uh, pay much attention to it for some reason. Uh, we're looking at... Remove. <laughs> we're looking at the SPLV, which is the Invesco S&P 500 Low Volatility. So... Do they, do they mean that there's a different mix? How do, what do they mean by low volatility? D, E, F, G. Yeah, so here we go. This is a D, that's an E, that's an F, and miraculously, it turns out a little do tiny doji candle, G, and then it makes lower lows. Now, I saw this, the exact same chart this morning, did I write it down? I must have, I must have, I must have. Let's just do this, finish that up. Hey, this is very interesting. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Because <clears throat> in the chart that I was looking at, it actually went to a D. So this is A, B. This is only going to a C at the low. Is this a brand new peak A? Uh, yes, it is, an A and a B. It has to be. Okay, very good. So the question is, what was the question? Um... Uh, um, here we go. Do, da, do, 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 S I L J. Is that what I looked at? No, you're looking at two different things. S P L V. Who, who typed it? Oh, it's S P. I could have wondered. Okay, S P L V. Yes, this is brand new leg B in the daily chart. 
Okay, so you'll have to just explain to me what it is um, because I can't do it right now, but absolutely, that's the Chapman Wave Falling Axe Formation. It snuck above it. It means that it should test the most important high. That's the high of this 10th of July, 56.58. 50, uh, the high today so far, 56.40. <clears throat> it should take that out. And that is, um, yeah, but exactly what is it? 25% utilities and 20 oh, 20% 20 REITs. I thought I recognized the pattern. That's so interesting. Very nice. Good. Um, yeah, it's looking good. I would say that it should go to a D, and then it should become a little bit toppy, <clears throat> because that'll be an E in the weekly chart. <clears throat> and all I can say is that it'll probably form a kind of a rectangle base, but I like it very much. Good eye. <clears throat> I think that the reads just on the shorter term are very close to uh, some chopping action. Let's just see. IYR, IYR is at a new all-time high right now. It's in leg, new leg D, and that's at 91.86 opens. That's at 92.11, and 92.25 was the high. So let me put this alternate count. Let's call that a D. Weekly chart has extended the E, or is it a brand new F? No, it's extend. No, no, no. So this went from 91.70 to 91.72. Yes, yes. And it's in. It's now there's a brand new resistance level for it to tackle, and this is one right here. It's Chapman Wave inside track. I'm going to talk about this on Wednesday night in my webinar, and it can go. Oh well, the next resistance is at 92.82. In the IYR, yes. Okay, I'll look at my uh, CCI. Those are what subscribers have. We got it from the 175s. It's trading at 144. It's almost up 10 points. Who would have thought that from a silly old REIT, this Crown Castle Core REIT Tower Cup and this is the Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle breakout pattern. It should go to a D based on this cup formation. I don't know if it will, but that's usually the, the result of this Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle. Uh, where the, the price soars to the left side high of 137.85 on the 20th of June and still in either a B or a C. This was a B, so it could still go to a D. Usually after that, you get a pretty sharp pullback towards the lip of the cup. That would be 137s. I'm not so sure about that. We'll just have to deal with it. Meantime, yes, very good. So I like it. I didn't ever see that before. And I need to write that down. SPLV. SPLV. Here we go. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Here we go. SPLV is on my list. SPLV. SPLV. Write it clearly, otherwise you'll never recognize that handwriting. Okay. So now, yeah, we want to go to the IYT, which is the next question. The IYT is trading up 252. It's pulled back from the intraday high. This is the this is the iShares. Um, transportation average ETF, 195.65, the high on the 16th of July, same as the Dow it made its high on, the, on July, um, at 195.65, and it pulls back very sharply to the low of 174 point, is that 50 something? Yeah, 53, I better put that in, 175.53. I did lose some data over the uh, week here, 175.53. I had to do a bunch of things, and... Um, had it, it shut down very suddenly, and I just had a little problem. So I did lose some data. Um, okay. Next thing we want to look at here is, and go, uh, it went above the 14 period moving average support at 182.74. It went to 183.89. It's pulled back quite a bit now. It's at 182.11. That's a bit of a struggle. And that weekly chart says it could struggle a little longer. That's why my pattern that I'm looking at is the lowercase h going to a lowercase M. Let me just show you this in the Dow. I drew it in for subscribers to my opening call with the plethora of charts I sent out Sunday. Uh, look, this H, oh, that's right. I did type it in, but it's on the other chart. I'll just put it in here. Goes to another lowercase arch, making a little M formation. It could go higher. 264.26 was the high back on the uh, 13th of August before it went to the low on Thursday of 25,339. Okay. Now, a couple of questions came in. Let me just double check the questions. Would I look at what happened here? Oh, I just got bombed from uh, MSNBC. How did I get all that? I didn't even go to MSNBC. All right. So what we're looking at here is um, 
within the context of the markets, I said I would look at the FANG stocks this week. So FANG, F, Facebook stuck in that lower range. I'm going to be talking about this in my webinar. What, what does it mean when I talk about a hectic top? When I talk about time and price, it means that the, the monthly chart is about to give a sell signal. You can't get a sell signal in the monthly unless the weekly is going to turn down. But the weekly won't turn down until the daily. When you get that hat trick where the daily turns down sharply, kicks in with a very important letter notation in the weekly, like this went from peak F uh, back at 208.6, 208.66. And that was back in uh, late July. Well, late July, uh, Facebook went to uh, 209. 208 actually 66 and that was the week of the 26 that's that same price but that was a peak e and now it's a leg b so that's good but wait look at the way back 218.62 a year ago july of 2018 in the monthly and it eventually fell down to the 123 level i believe so that was the hat trick top look at uh, amazon amzn uh, trading right now up 28 at 1821 still just going to the lowercase h to a lowercase m pattern makes an all-time high the newest all-time the 2000 2050.50 was the high back in september plummets down plummets down to 1307 in december round number low spirals back over to 2035.80 peak d in the daily takes its time remember i was speaking about this in the webinar i was speaking about it all week and i i, I said i'll be I'll be talking about this in the webinar, and that is that it takes a long time for something, if it's going sideways, to suddenly break in there. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which includes the standard market technical indicators enhance the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to Dave newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
I, was, I just got told that I, I, I thought I'd done it. I thought I'd done it twice. In fact, I was already at about 6.30 this morning, maybe 6 o'clock. I thought I'd sent, I, I don't have time to check it right now, but my trader's corner, it should have gone out. You should have got it, <clears throat> but I'm just putting it in right now for those of you who say that you didn't get it, which is a great shame because we have one that has done beautifully. Um, <clears throat> So what's today? Today, 19-19, upload image. I must have done it. Surely I did, I did it. Okay, but just in case, um, did I, did I, you know what? You know what? I don't see it. How could I have done that? What a day. Well, I'll tell you what happened. Um, I'm going to do it right now, if you don't mind. I'm not going to wait because it was so important. Uh, we call this... Traders Corner, right here. Okay, that's my traders. The first time I've ever I've ever done that. I think Traders Corner in thousands of uh, more than thousands, tens of thousands of posts. O H one nine one nine. You'll see why this is really upsetting to me because we got something perfectly this morning. Had it gone out, I think it went out, but I might be wrong. I'm just doing this right now. Um, so let me just check that I actually sent it because I'm talking at the same time. No, I almost didn't send it. There it goes. Okay. So that's going to go. Trader's Corner has just gone out for those of you uh, <clears throat> who didn't get that part of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, what a day. The whole thing is that it was a chance that tomorrow I was going to be leaving for Sydney, Australia. My brother was ill for a little while <clears throat> and suddenly had a relapse. And I was all ready to go. I was just about to book when my sister-in-law said, <clears throat> big recovery, doing very well, don't come now. Um, so I was really just, con I was just totally focused on that. It's one of the reasons why I didn't sleep all that well last night. I only found out this morning. So that might be the one. That might not be a good excuse. But it was something. Um, yeah. So that, yes, thank you, he's, he's, he's feeling, he's, uh, at least he's improving a lot, and that was really important, but it was just, it was really close. I was about to leave uh, within another hour or two tomorrow this time. Um, okay, so uh, the Dow's up 247. What I was going to do before I interrupted myself was I was going to come back. I wanted to show you that within the context of these major leaders, the FANG stocks, Look at this. 233.47 was the high in Apple back in, why didn't I put a date there, back in 2018. That was, was that October? Yes, 2018. Uh, you know, the thing also is that I for the last uh, two weekends, maybe th two weekends, I've been getting new computers and to, to transfer everything over was just a really, I, I didn't expect it to be such a big deal. But we've managed to do everything, and everything's working out. Goes to 142 low in December. That's a 90. I mean, that's a almost 100 point. No, it's, yeah, it's a 100 point decline in Apple. Then it rallies back, rallies back strongly to the uh, last high of in the 220 area just three weeks ago. Pulls back again to the 200 period moving average in the 193 area, and now it's showing a 211 in a leg C. It's really struggling. It's doing okay because this is a huge big cap. And it's done fantastically in terms of a couple of years, but it's, this is a big digestive phase. And I was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I was really intent on on getting that that reversal, which we did. We got it perfectly last year. I said all summer I was saying, watch out, the Fang stocks are going to have a, a hat trick top in the Chapman wave, and that's time and price. Even had an interview uh, in Financial Sense where I was talking about it. Uh, back last year, I think it was in uh, October, I was talking about that. So now what we've got is only Amazon. Let me just check Amazon right now. Amazon got real close to the 2050.50 all-time high. Uh, Netflix has really been clobbered. It is down from the 384 last high, but the 423 high of June of 2018, it really uh, just careened down to the 231 level, rallied up to the 380s, slumped to the 280s, and now it's trading at 309. It, they need time. And that's the reason why I'm saying to subscribers, I believe that we will have another sudden pullback. But shock, uh, earthquake, 
an aftershock. Remember, you don't know if there's going to be a retest of the lows, it's going to be a higher low, or it's going to really go sharply low. We'll, we'll see soon enough. But what's really important is that Netflix has gone to a trough C in the daily chart, and it's trying to rally. But until it can get to the, let me give you a number, until it can really trade in the two, 328, 333 area over a two-week span, trying to turn the 320 level into a base, this is this this is tough. Let's look at the XLE. I haven't looked at that in ages. Don't know if I've even updated the notation. Okay, trough D, trough E, and it's trying to rally. See here again, beautiful cut arch formation. Look at this arch formation. What are we always looking for in the Chapman wave methodology? We're looking for only three patterns: straight up, straight down, or the arch, or the cup. Uh, you can have variations, but that's basically what we're looking at. Well. Um, at 50, 55, just recently, trading now at 58.16, it is away off the highs that were made in 2018 up in the 78, 79 area, plummeted down to the December low. I think it was December or November low in the 50. What was that? Was that 52? Was it even lower? Yeah, 53.36. Uh, let me just type that in, 53.36. Uh, yeah. I think this is starting, it's attempting to make an arch formation in the weekly chart to say, you know what, I can have another bounce, but I can only have bounces. I haven't, there's nothing really tangible here. I think America is actually really uh, putting it to, to the, um, all, all the countries that are oil producing countries. I mean, America is really turning out the oil, oil and gas, natural gas. That's impressive. So that is a big thing. And that's just saying, yes, you can have bounces, but they're within the context of um, the arch formation. So subscribers, yes, it's gone out. The uh, my, If you didn't get my trader's corner, it's gone out. Um, I, <laughs> very upsetting uh, because the position that you should have been able to get today, which was one I thought about and thought about, took a lot of time, did a lot of work trying to get it right. It's up 20 something's up uh, almost a percentage from what I said to, to buy it. Uh, but you know what? This is a 10% is a dividend play. Uh, you, could get, you have to buy a little bit less if you're going to buy it now. And um, gee, that's upsetting. That's if, if, if it didn't go through. Uh, but in the meantime, back at the ranch, let's go through. Uh, yes, it is. It's amazing how bad the energy stocks have been. But you know, they. They will be buys, and I think they could be buys a little later on this year. They're starting to base at this particular point. It's on my list to talk about on Wednesday night. Uh, but in the meantime, back at the ranch, as they say, we have an energy play that does give a dividend. And I think that's a better way to play because it gives you this cushion of, of if we're going to hold it for a long time, it does give you a cushion uh, because of the dividend. Very, very good dividend. Now, question I had about... Um, the steel stocks. I'll talk about the steel stocks. Look, SLX, uh, that's the steel ETF, Vector Steel ETF. Yeah, it's a nice bounce, but boy, it made a lower low, and um, it has another week to go to close above 33.60. It's at 32.67 right now, just to kind of save the day to at least have a, a little bit more of a rally. But uh, this is, uh, it's not a great looking chart, that's for sure. And you are going to have to have China at least chime in to say something about uh, steel. All right, I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Edition is out. Dow's up 257, S&P's up 34. We'll be right back. And a couple of questions I have. I'll if do. you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. All right, so I, I was asked by a couple of people have just sent uh, uh, messages and asked about uh, gold and silver. Let me just show you the GDX. The GDX right now has made a peak F round number high at 30. And um, that's an alternate count. No, nope, it's correct count. That is a peak F at 30 on the 7th of August. So let me put this in. And can I make it a red? Uh, I'll edit it right now. Yes, I can make it red. So this is 7-8 uh, or was it 8-7? Eight, 8-7. Seven. Eight, seven. Uh, now it's really important and I'm going to call this a red one because I think that just on a shorter term basis, silver as, and gold have made some kind of a short term uh, top. And we also look at the same as bonds. And it's gone to trough A, trough B, and a trough C. So the GDX is the gold miners ETF. It's the Van Eck Vectors gold miners. And uh, it, it not a big deal. So it goes from 30 to 28. What is it at right now? 28.35. The low is today is 27.61. Uh, three and a half points, 10 percent correction after a massive move to the upside. Basically going from the 20 level to the 30 level. That's a 30 percent, 33 percent rally. Uh, yeah, you can expect some kind of a give back here. So I would just say, in looking at the SILV, well, I can't even remember what it was. Let me just double check what the uh, symbol was. Would I look at, would I look at, would I look at, and I did, but now I can't see. Oh, this is what the problem is. Okay, so we're looking at uh, SILJ, SILJ. So SILJ, this is the junior silver. And what we're looking at is SLJ is trading at, um, it's the same thing, same as the GDX. It made a little double top, and that was at about the 10, right there. That was the 1080 level on the 7th. So let me put that in so that I don't have to keep looking at it. 10.80 on 8 7th. And it's pulling back, and I have to put a down arrow, and I have to put this in red because it's made a short-term top that's gone to a sell signal, upgraded today to a sell mode, even though it's a very nice turnaround. It's up two cents. The MACD is very negative. Stochastic is at 53%. It hit the 200-period moving average in the weekly chart at 10.43, going to the 10.8 level. Change that. 
10.8 level. And now it's it, it actually this morning it touched 9.53, the nine period, the green nine period moving average of the weekly chart. MACD is good, stochastic is good. Yeah, I do think this is a pullback. Now, if you had to ask me where to get in, I would say if you aren't in, but I know that you're in other gold and silver stocks, I just wouldn't get carried away to feel like you're really missing out here. I do think it could bounce, but I got a feeling that it has to test the 9.20 to 8.90. This is the two orange 200 period exponential moving average, and then let's look at it again. So I'm just going to say, yes, you could nibble at it here and say that I'm going to put it a buy in here and a buy in a little lower down. Low. I. I think right now, even though it's in a leg C, probably a peak C, and now it could start to move towards the leg D. I don't want to say do anything like shorting gold, anything like that. I'm just going to say this pattern is one we are familiar with, and it tends to hop around here for a little bit longer. And I would say if you really want over 30 cents, I would say, yeah, that is a big deal now because it could go down to the 890s, and that makes sense, a big percentage move. But... This is the area that you would start looking at it if you aren't in it. So if you want to nibble here at 984, that's it. But the real buy would be below today's low. I'd say 935 is where I really would start to look at it. Then that's when you need to just give me a yell and I'll look at it again. A question I had about, uh, where was it? Mm -hmm. Yes, in the bigger picture. I'm going to be talking about the bigger picture on uh, Wednesday at, in my webinar. It's really important that the timing here is right because I still feel strongly that there's going to be a couple of smackdowns. Those smackdowns could be buying opportunities. But if they smack down is going from lower highs to lower lows, that's something very important. Right now, the move that we've had off the low that was made from Thursday's low, the, uh, this is very nice action all day. The shorts have been trying to get a get some kind of thing going to the short side, and it's just not working. And that's saying that there's internal strength. So um, I, I like what I'm seeing here. I don't want to. I don't want to say to you just grab it here because it's going much higher because this is in a consolidation phase. This this arch pattern says that you could build another right shoulder right here for um, some kind of head and shoulders pattern. It doesn't mean to have the, the conclusion is it goes down to the 850s, but it does say it could take a little time just take, digesting these really big gains. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, and Merck, I had a question about Merck. I can't believe it. With all the stuff going on, um, with all the talk in the Senate, with Congress, with everybody yelling and screaming about drug prices and the pharmaceuticals, etc. Here is Merck trading uh, a, B, C, D, E, trading at 86.27. Look at this monthly chart, beautiful monthly chart, very long-term trend line, hit the trend line resistances. <laughs> if I said long-term, I mean monthly chart, long, long-term, that goes back to 2005, where there was a low at a trough D uh, around about 28, and it screams up to the... Uh, 60, just over 60 to a peak D in the monthly chart, plummets to a lower low. And that's always so difficult. The lower low, it looks terrible, but the technicals were improving. Goes to 20.05 back in March of 2009. And then <coughs> at that low, that multi generational low, it goes peak A, B, C, D, another one A, B, C, D, E. And then it pulls back. And then there's another A, B, C, D, E, pulls back. And now it's only in C. And if it makes a new recovery high this month, it extends C if it goes above 87.07. It's only uh, less than 90 cents away from doing that. that uh, it's, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, Merck is also a dividend stock. Oh, it's not great, but it's a dividend paying stock. So this is something to keep in mind. If this is only a leg C, the very next big pullback, just give me a yell because we'll look at it because that could be another a buy mode going to even higher highs. Oh, and look at this. You won't believe it. Look at this huge cup formation. Uh, let's squeeze, 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 squeeze. Back in 2000, Merck was like a bubble stock. It was like the um, like the internet. It goes to 91.50 November of 2000. This is after the markets had, had already started tanking. It delayed. It went later, and then it plummets all the way down from 91.50, even after some really good rallies. It plummets down to the 18 to 20.05 
March of 2009 before starting another move up. And here it is at 86.28, just $5 away from the all-time high. I, I have a little section. I, I forgot all about it. But I have a section in my webinar called Old is New. And uh, that's going to be uh, very important. Remember, the oldest news like Microsoft and Adobe, they all had major tops, uh, Qualcomm major tops in 2000, and they plummeted 85, 90% or more. And then they had rallies that went to all-time highs. Some have doubled that price that they were at in 2000 or more. So I'm going to be talking about that. Uh, so Merck is acting very well up one, two, three, at 86.29. Very nice action. Yes, a question there. A uh, question about, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to uh, Mike in Ormond Beach. Mike in Ormond Beach. Gee, I forgot all about it. My mind is not good today. Didn't have enough. So Mike, I hope you're holding, Mike. I'm so sorry. Jeez, I always do this. I'm talking to Mike right now. Mike, are you there? I think Mike had, a, had to go. Oh, I can't believe it. I even told my engineer, I'm going right to Mike. And I forgot. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Wow, what a day I've had. It's, uh, it, it didn't do it. Larry seems to do very well on little sleep. I didn't have much sleep, but last night was less than little sleep. So I'm just really all mixed up. Uh, Jim, yes, it went out on Friday. That's where we got uh, that particular stock. And, that, and today was just an update on it. I have sent out the Trader's Corner again. And I hope uh, everybody's checking out the stock that we were buying this morning is now up even sharper than uh, earlier on. Um, what can I say? Uh, so we're looking at, uh, okay, a couple of things. Yes, the ES, let me just see what we get here. ES is the E-mini leg E slash A. Now, I, 
everything about this says that this should be the letter E at 3029 in the E mini. If we start a new buy mode, it's going to be like a fresh A, a fresh B, whatever it is. And if it goes above 3029.50 in the E mini in the next two weeks or so, I, I just have to consider there's a really good chance that we've started a whole new move to the upside. I'll talk about that in my webinar. Uh, so uh, that, that was the answer. D d is this an E to an A? Well, it can't be an A because you went way below the D, way below the D to the 200 period moving average. So that's out. It has to be an E. And the next thing that we go could be an F because it didn't go below the starting point, which is way back in December for the weekly chart. So I hope I've answered that. I'll do a little clearer tomorrow. And hopefully I will be clear and fresh and do everything nice and bright and breezy tomorrow. Um, I'm sorry, I had everything ready way early this morning, around about 6, 6.30, so I don't know what I did to mess up. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, the webinar's coming up. There are plenty of stocks that are starting to look very good as exactly fitting what I wanted to talk about. Stocks that have been battered that look as if they could start a fresh new move to the upside or sectors that might be ready for a move to the upside or dividend stocks or stocks that we want to treat as dividend stocks that could, in fact, become really good buys. You know, we've had a really nice one. Didn't even expect it to go quite as high in this time frame. And that was CCI up now, the high of uh, all time high of 144.47. It really is about 10 points higher than we got it just two weeks ago in, in a reach, 10% in a reach in this time. That's really quite incredible. But there will be a pullback and will be pretty sharp. But so far, it's acting very well. So, folks, stay tuned. You got, oh, stay tuned. I'll do the update in a moment. And then you got Steve Rhodes, you got Dave White, and you got Tom O'Brien. And don't forget my webinar. Go to the front page of TFNN. It's coming up on Wednesday night. Should be really interesting and really timely. I'll be back in a few.